Before we get to our questions, I wanted to talk about something I've been thinking a lot about, which is the integration of Notch and Touch Designer. Now, this is something that's really interesting to me because it seems like the marriage of two perfectly unionized softwares. You have Touch Designer on the one hand, which is this amazing tool to connect anything, to make environments, to control stuff, script stuff. It's, you know, the Swiss Army knife turned up to a thousand percent. And then on the other hand, you have this tool Notch, which is so driven by the desire to make great content, to make great looking, almost, you know, cinema 4D and Maya-like types of stuff, but in real time. So that was really exciting just on its own. But then when you start to think about the, the ideas of how can we connect these two, I think things start to get really exciting. And a little while ago, Derivative introduced Notch Blocks into Touch Designer. And Notch Blocks are essentially an export format from Notch. So if you think about something like Cinema 4D, where you make your crazy content, and you hit the render button, and you get a movie out the other end, Notch actually has a couple different ways of exporting stuff. You know, one of them is obviously you can render the content. You could export it as a standalone application if you just want to, you know, run an exe file and call it a day. But the interesting one is the Notch block export. And essentially what this does is it takes your whole patch, compiles it down to a DLL, which is just like a little file that runs. Well, you can't run it, but other things can run it but it's, it's a thing. Now, that DLL gets loaded in by the Notch kind of back end that's integrated into other softwares. So a good example of this is, it's really popular for Disguise, which was formerly D3, uh, Disguise Media Servers. They do so much interesting stuff, you know, people love running them for shows, they've got good uh, master-slave relationships, good previs, you know, media server operators really dig in D3, they like Disguise, and they always had trouble, like, how do we get content in here? And the answer usually was pre-render it or have a totally different computer running content feeding it into the Disguise server. Now they can take these DLL files that come out of Notch, load them right into Disguise, and it's as if that content, well, it's not as if, that content is, is running in real time behind the scenes, and the Disguise programmer has access to it as well as exposing different parameters that they want to control. Similar to how when we're making components, we might make some custom parameters that give you know other users some easy ways to access this. Now that's cool for for the disguise folks, but we ain't, we ain't disguise folks around here. Now with Touch Designer, we can do the same thing, except like I said be, in the beginning, the really interesting part is taking that power of making beautiful content, and then taking all the different ways we can control stuff from Touch Designer, and merging them together in a holy union. So I figured it would be a nice little example that I could show of making a small notch block, loading it into Touch Designer, and I can quickly tell you a little bit of the considerations you might want to have if you're experimenting with this, and maybe some of the requirements you might need to meet to start using this stuff. So let me first go ahead and share my screen here. Now, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to boot up Notch, and I have the, I got the most basic license. Listen, for most intents and purposes, you don't need the really expensive licenses to dive into Notch. You don't even need the really expensive licenses, I don't think, to build a lot of the content you want to make. Um, and for me, so far in my experimentation, just the builder license has been more than enough. I'm just going to go ahead and open up a blank project. You know, we're not doing anything fancy here, so we don't need to worry about any of this stuff. Uh, if you have used Notch before, you're going to laugh at how simple my example is. If you haven't used Notch before, you're going to appreciate how simple my example is. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're just going to make a little particle system, and then we're going to take the X, Y, and Z positions of that particle system's emitter and expose them so that when we load it into Touch Designer, we can then control the emission of particles and move them around from Touch Designer. Now in Notch, you have something called the root node, which is this bad boy right here. 
And everything kind of goes back and connects to the root node. And that's kind of like almost in touch designer, our render top in our render context, because so much of Notch is GPU driven. So if I wanted to get started with a, a particle system, you know, the quickest things you need to know is in the nodes section, everything is color coded. All the orange ones are based on particles. And the first thing you need for any particle system is a particle root. It's this little, almost looks like a boss. And you take your root node and you connect it to the particle root node. And then there's only a few things we need from there. And one is an emitter. And you can see actually in Notch, the nodes are organized pretty well for someone just learning. So we can see under particles, we have an emitter here. I'll open that drop down. And what I'm going to do is use a primitive emitter. And what I do when I have that primitive emitter is take the output of my particle root node and plug it into the input of that. Now, one more thing I'm going to add before I hit play is a renderer so that I can actually see some of these particles in action, you know, as they're doing stuff. And very similarly, I can close the emitters tab and I can see a rendering little drop down here. And there's different ways you can render particles inside of Notch. And this is one of the really cool things. I'm sure you've seen a lot of like the plexus effects and the trails and stuff like that. You know, one of the really things, uh, exciting things for me about Notch is how easy it is to make cool content. And a good example of that might be, you know, I'll take something like a trail renderer. And similarly, I'll take my particle root node output, connect it to the trail renderer. And if I hit play, so far nothing. But what we're going to do is take a effector and add some curl noise to it. So once I got some curl noise to it, I've got my particles moving around. And we can see there's all kinds of crazy stuff happening in there. And Notch is really cool because it exposes a lot of parameters for you. So Notch, the workflow is a little bit different than Touch Designer, where in Touch Designer, we have these really low level nodes where we kind of have to build our own functionality out of. Notch's concept is really more about taking these high level nodes, you know, plugging a few of them in together and then using the exposed parameters that they have already for you to change how you want it to look. So for example, if we want to change this primitive type inside of the trail renderer, we can change it from maybe thick lines to lines. Now we've got these kind of squiggly things going on, which are pretty cool. Now, I'm not going to get too into the weeds on making the most hectic notch application here ever. This is enough for our test because what we're more interested in is now we've got a thing. How do we bring it over to Touch Designer? So the first thing we probably want to do is identify any of the things that we want to control in real time from Touch Designer. So for example, I said for this example, we were going to just move the emitter of the particles around. So maybe you're trying to build an installation where, you know, the user steps in front of the screen, there's a connect camera, they kind of wave their hands around and it emits, you know, beautiful particles. So in this case, I would go to my primitive emitter here, which is emitting my particles. And I could see in its parameters, I have position X, Y, and Z. And if I just move that around here, just to test it out a bit. I can confirm X, Y, and Z are moving around. So I want to essentially expose these parameters to Touch Designer, and there's a very easy way to do that. For any parameter inside of Notch, you'll see a little question mark to the left side of it. And if I click this next to position X, I'll get this little property pop-up menu. And what I want to do is click on this expose property button. Now, this is a really, really, really cool feature because what it does is it takes this property and when I load the notch block in Touch Designer, it's going to automatically make a custom parameter that me controlling that custom parameter is going to be controlling this value inside of the notch block. Very, very cool, very, very easy. In most cases, you almost don't need to mess with anything here. I mean, just simply clicking expose property, hitting okay, is almost all that we need. So in that case, we can see now that the question mark is lit up a little bit. So I'll go ahead and expose the property on my Y position. 
and on my Z position. And just for fun, let's go and find another property we can expose. How about this radius of my curl noise? So we can see if I turn it down, the ball becomes pretty small. And I can turn it up and get a lot more hectic noises out of it. So I'll go ahead and expose that. And then let's grab something from our trail renderer just so that we're feature complete in some sense. Maybe I will take, what about line thickness here? Now let's skip that one. Let's go to, what other options do we have? Trail decay. Well, that's interesting. Let's expose that, I like that. So we'll click on the question mark, expose property, hit okay. So now we've got a bunch of properties exposed and one of the nice things is inside of Notch, you can see by going in the bottom right to this exposed area and it'll show you all of the different things that you've exposed. And I believe you even have an exposed area which shows it all in the list. Great, so now we've come time to export this and it's really easy because all we're going to do is, is stop playback. We're going to go to project and compile block for media server. And in this case, you might have never thought of touch designer as a media server, but in fact it can be and it is. So I'll go ahead and save this somewhere on my desktop and I'll just name it text or test in this case. And we'll see it creates a DFX DLL file. Hit save, hit OK. It takes a moment to compile. This is where we can play our Bob Ross music. Okay, so now we're good. So now what we can do is hop over into Touch Designer. And actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to close Notch because my Ultrabook is not happy about the amount of processing happening at the moment. So let me delete everything in here. And what I'm going to do is make a Notch Top. And the Notch Top, its only function is you tell it where the Notch Block is and it loads it for you. So I can go ahead and click the little plus button here and I can see in my file browser the test DLL that we made double click it and give it a moment to load. And that's important because the notch block is gonna load all of the assets in it, all of the GPU memory it needs, it's gonna load it on launch. So always loading a notch block takes a bit of time. So what essentially what you wanna do is load them all at the beginning of launching your project. You know, don't wait around thinking, you know, I'll be hot swapping notch blocks. No, you should really just load them at the beginning of what you're working on. And I'll come back to that in a moment. But what you can already see is, first of all, because of the license type I'm using, which is the builder license, there is there are watermarks, and we'll see all different kinds of them. The screen will change color. You know, the notch text will appear in the background. There goes my screen color change. So I'll come back and talk about those licenses in a moment. But what we have here is now, this is running in real time. This is doing our, our little particle business that we developed in Notch. If we come down into our parameters, we'll see we have untitled layer just because I'm a messy notch programmer and I didn't name my layer. But if I go down here, all of a sudden you can see these sections that are split off based on the name of the node from notch. And we can see all of the parameters that we have exposed over there. So for example, if I was to wanted to move this left and right, actually let me use the value slider to give it a bit more extreme movement. You can see it's basically as if I was running this natively inside a touch designer. It's as if I had made this, you know, curly noise. Actually, Z position is not going to do much in this case, but it's as if I made this curl noise inside a touch designer. Now, this is the really simple example. So, you know, if you go to Notch's website and you see all the beautiful content, then you'll be more excited about why this is so good. 
you know, if you're just talking about like curl noise and leaving a bunch of trails and stuff like that, you might be like, oh, well, Elbers, you're sounding a little too excited for this. But when you start thinking about all of the different kinds of content, you know, I'm sure you've seen the render qualities of Notch, things like uh, ray tracing are, I think, are almost running in real time. Um, the materials look really beautiful. Importing models is really easy. There's so many of these different types of effectors. If you're working with particle systems or you want to do fluid simulations or smoke simulations, there's so many different nodes that make that really easy to do a notch. And then once you bring it over the touch designer when it's showtime, then you get all of the power that you had of making content in notch with the amazing connectivity and like state machine that you can make out of touch designer. So for example, you know, if I can plug in a mouse in shop, get my mouse positions, do a little bit of math on that. And then reference that in the custom parameters that I set up for myself from my notch block. And just like that, you know, we've got this running in real time pretty well, I would say, for an ultra book right now, uh, but super easy to extend, to expand, and to work on, you know, however extreme the content you want to make in Notch and bring over to Touch. It's super easy to make that content and then bring it over and control it.